this September. Bad blood will be settled. This is more than personal. The long-awaited trilogy. There's real bad blood here. Canelo versus Triple G. September 17th, live on DAZN pay-per-view. Visit DAZN.com. This is Matt Frayne Toolboxing. We're here in Las Vegas. It wouldn't be a Las Vegas fight week without seeing Dan Raphael. You give me so much of your time last time. I really appreciate it. It's nice to see you again. So before we get into things, before we talk Canelo Triple G, how are we? We all good? Listen, I'm I'm doing very well. I'm excited to be here. It's been uh, it's been a little bit since I've been at a fight. I was, uh, uh, you know, I've been going to some fights, but not as much as I was. And uh, how can you possibly miss this when I covered Canelo and Triple G one and two um, back here uh, in, the, in terms of the host uh, here at the MGM and T-Mobile. Uh, I yeah. think actually, once this fight takes place, I'll, I'll have covered every single boxing event that's taken place at the T-Mobile Arena. So I got to keep the streak alive, right? That's an incredible streak. Um, talk to me about this main event. When we look at Gennady Golovkin, for him, this is purely business. You can tell on his face. It is personal, but as he comes across and pro pro projects this, for me, this is business. For Canelo, he's saying a lot of things about Golovkin. He's really aggravated by him, it seems, and this is personal. What do you make of this, and who does this, who does this benefit? Well, first of all, in terms of the, the veneer that Gennady is, that it's all business, that may be the case. Uh, he's a human being, trust me. Yeah. It, it's not, old, there, yes, it's business and it's a fight, but he, they, they didn't do 24 rounds together and have all the back and forth and the, and, the, and, the, and the bad things that go on over the last few years between them for that to not to be somewhere in the recess of his mind, of the recesses of his mind. Yeah. Uh, so it's one thing for him to say that publicly, but I'm sure that in his own private thoughts, he wants to kick his ass real bad. <laughs> it's more than just business. Uh, you know, at least with Canelo, I feel like he's at least being honest about it. Yeah. He's not trying to hide about it. Not, he's not saying it's just another fight. He's saying his, what he feels. And, uh, you know, he took some of the things that Gennady said about him uh, after their second fight or before their second fight, even after it was postponed, uh, canceled yeah. at one point, then rescheduled after he had a, a failed drug test. And he kind of took it personal, and I don't blame him. And Gennady took it personal, too, because he was upset by it. And so yeah. they clearly have a difference of opinion. And uh, uh, I, I can't even say they're, they're here in this third fight to settle the score because officially Gennady doesn't have a victory. Yeah. But there's a lot of people that think that Canelo doesn't have a victory. So yeah. it's not like they're clearly one and one and this is to break the yeah. tie. You know, officially, you have Canelo is one win, no losses, and one draw. Yeah. And Triple G, obviously, is, you know, 0-1-1. Mm -hmm. But there's lots of people that think Canelo is 0-2. Yeah. Um, of my opinion, uh, is that Triple G is 1-0-1, a win in the, se in the first fight, a draw in the second fight. Yeah. Yeah, um, but it's not, a, it's not like this is... It doesn't really settle the score. The only way it kind of settles the score, I think, is if there is like a definitive if result. It's a knockout, if it's right. like you know when Pacquiao and, and Pacquiao and, and uh, Marquez had fought three times, and they're all yeah. very close, controversial sort of decisions, and there was never a definitive result. However, you scored those fights. But in the fourth yeah. fight, whatever happened in the first three, you know Juan Manuel Marquez took it into his own hands and scored a one-punch knockout. And, that's what everybody's going to remember as the punctuation point for that rivalry. If that type of knockout occurs in this fight, the closeness and the, you know, it will put a, it'll, it will put that stamp on this rivalry if that happens. I think just before we go on to the knockout situation, do you think the reason Canelo takes it personally is because if you watched um, Triple G yesterday at the Grand Arrival, he mentions about it being a clean spot, and it's almost like an under, an underlying tone of. We want it to be clean in reference to the, obviously the failed drugs um, situation with Canelo. Is that what do you think irks at Canelo? The fact that that still keeps getting brought up, and you know it's going to follow him. It is what it is. But is that the underlying thing that really sort of sits with Canelo? Is in like, you know what, this is this is in out of order kind of thing. Yeah, I think it probably does. And I mean, look, I don't want to bore everybody. I could go chapter and verse no. of why Canelo's failed drug test is not the same as other failed drug tests. Yeah. I mean, people can Google it. I've reported about it extensively. Yeah, yeah. Just I'll make one small point about it. The amount of clenbuterol that was tested positive for in his system, if that test occurred today under the current rules that exist from WADA that are followed now by the WBC and other yeah. places, it wouldn't be a failed test. The, the amount was changed because having clenbuterol in your system at that minuscule amount has become somewhat acceptable because of how much it has impacted athletes because of tainted beef, yeah. uh, mostly in Mexico. Yeah. So, you know, again, if people want to just off their, uh, you know, off the top of their head say, you know, he's a dirty fighter. Yeah. 
they don't really, they've never done the actual reporting and homework and read the act. It's like, yeah. it's like you can have an opinion about something, but you never read the small print. I read the small print. Yeah. And I know what I'm talking about. His, his drug test that was a failed test, it was a failed test. I'm not going to say it wasn't under the existing rules at the time. But it's not the same as like, you know, yeah, uh, anabolic steroids. John Pascal with a million pal Tests or, Miller. or Gerald Miller with uh, any number of various substances that he's tested positive for. Yeah. Not every failed drug test is the same. Yeah. That's all I can say. Right, let's come back to the knockout situation. Um, at Triple G at 40 years of age, um, do you, before we get to that, do you, do you think we can see a knockout in this fight? Is that on the cast? Because when we look at the previous fights, Canelo hit Triple G with a shot which would have put most people into the stratosphere with an overhand right, and he literally shook it off and carried on walking forward. And he, I think he referenced it, he says, not a bit like a slap. I don't know whether he was joking, but I mean, wow. Do you think we can see a knockout in this fight? In any boxing match, there are going to be a knockout because you have grown men or grown women, for that matter, punching each other in the face. Yeah. So, of course, that's possible. But these two guys in particular have had supreme chins throughout their careers, yes. never been down either one of them, never Canelo visibly hurt badly one time, mm -hmm in like his first American TV fight, you know, yeah. on an on a undercard of a pay-per-view, what, 15 years ago? Yeah. Whatever it was against Miguel Cotto's older brother. Yeah. And I remember, I was at the fight, I'm like, this is what all the hype's about? Well, then he came back and he, you know, beat him up the rest of the fight, yeah. and he's never been shaken again, you know? And that was however many years ago, and he's gone through uh, from welterweight all the way up to light heavyweight. So, you know, but yes, a knock can happen because these are premier punchers and also, uh, on top of them having outstanding uh, chins and being able to take the shot. So, but my inclination is, no, it probably isn't going to be a knockout. And if it was a knockout, my, if I had a, like, if you said to me, you there's going to be a knockout, yeah, yeah. I would say, well, okay, fine. It probably would be from a body shot because yeah. both of them are adept at body punching. Absolutely. Triple G maybe doesn't go there enough, but we all have seen Canelo uh, rip to the body many times. And when Gennady decides to throw to the body, he's devastating also. And so, you know, I don't really see a knockout. I've heard some people say Gennady's going to get blown through and they're going to knock him out. I'm like, based on what evidence? Because you. When has anyone, when has anyone ever blown through Gennady yeah, Golovkin? I mean, no, never. I mean, 40, but still. like I've said, he, he's got a loss that was controversial, controversial to Canelo, and he's got a draw that everybody thought he won against Canelo. Those are the two blemishes on his record in a in a in a yeah. star-studded career that this guy has had, a record-setting career. So, um, never visibly hurt, never knocked down. Never even really, really severely cut, maybe once or twice a small cut, but yeah. I mean, the logic doesn't say, and just because you're 40 doesn't mean you're suddenly going to start getting knocked out. Yeah, if you look after yourself like he has, and in the condition sure. he's in, surely you can put off five of the time. And that, that comes on to my next question. At 40 years of age, if he is to take a loss to Canelo now, although he's a champion in another division, do you, do you think that'll be the end for him? Do you think he will stop fighting if he does get beaten, or is it... Is it the manner of the defeat that's important? I mean, the manner of defeat, I think, is would play a role if he did get a destroyed and just, you know, pummeled yeah. for six or seven rounds and stopped. You know, maybe then he would call it a day. But if he were to lose another controversial decision, why would he? Have, why would you want to see him retire even? Uh, he still has other fights remaining, I believe, on his contract with the zone. Yeah. So there's still going to be fights out there. I had a Zoom call with Gennady one-on-one -on -one, uh, a few days, you know, uh, like before fight week uh, for uh, some stories I was working on, and I asked him about that. And he was like, look, we, we can talk about all, there's many possibilities. I have some ideas of fights that I want. You know, I'll address all of that, you know, the day after the fight, yeah. you know, or after the fight's over with. Uh, one thing that will occur, that will, his hand will be forced, at least in some fashion, on a somewhat uh, timely manner after this fight, is that because win, win or lose, he's still the WBA's champion at 160 pounds. Yeah. Uh, you know, he's a unified champion, but the WBA in particular is saying, they put out a, a, a resolution a few weeks ago saying, He'll have, I forget if it was 10 days or 15 days, whatever yeah. it was, where he'll have that time period in which to decide, am I going to defend my middleweight title against Lara? And if so, they would order uh, the negotiation, then you know, yeah. give them time, and if not, there'll be a purse. But so at the very least, in terms of the WBA belt specifically, he'll have you know, a week or two post-fight to decide what he wants to do. Now maybe he just gives it up and he'll keep the other belt that he has, but the ball will get rolling on what his future plans will be. And certainly if he wins, I can't imagine he's going to retire. You'd just be Canelo Alvarez, you're the undisputed yeah, super middleweight champ. Yeah, Why yeah. are you retiring? And you got a, a chance to make a ton more money. And by the way, he still likes boxing. It's, you know, it's not like yeah. he doesn't enjoy it. He still enjoys it by all accounts. You know, he's, he likes the camp, seems in a good mood. And, you yeah. know, Chipper, when I talk to him, 
Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing it this weekend. Another fight, it's been a strange sort of 48, 72 hours with things coming out from fights that are already penciled in and negotiations that are apparently underway in terms that have been accepted. Tyson Fury, Anthony Joshua. Um, Tyson Fury is offered the terms apparently it's all being accepted they're waiting for a draft contract now I don't know whether the stumbling block I asked Eddie about this is in the contract if the contract is this has to be primarily on BT Sports what's the situation and he says that can't happen because Joshua's it have to, um, contract with the zone have to be a co-promotion but I think he alluded to he could do it with the zone's blessing now I cannot see after he signed with the zone and I'm sure it's hundreds of millions of dollars or whatever he's contracted to, that his pay-per-view goes on Sky Sports and then goes on BT Sport. I mean, look, the bottom line is it's, it, there's a big, big difference, not just in boxing, but in life, for you to say, yeah, we agree, and then actually put Sign your it. pen to paper and make it a legal binding contract. So in boxing in particular, that is uh, there's a long way, as they say, from the lip to the cup. <laughs> so... I'm glad they're all saying the right things. I want to see the fight. Tell me when it's signed and I'll be more believing of it. Are you surprised that this fight's happening now? Because Eddie Hearn alluded to after the fight, look, Anthony Joshua needs to be more active. 11 months he dedicated his life to trying to win that rematch. It didn't happen for him. So mentally, physically, it takes a lot out of him. But to get the best out of a fighter, a lot of times activity can be key. They talked about November, December dates. Maybe at the O2 instead of a big arena. Take the, the, the pressure out a bit. Maybe fight a top 10, top 15 fighter. He'll still sell out. But no, it's Tyson Fury, the WBC champion. Surprised at all? I mean, I am a little bit. I mean, from Joshua's point of view, it's a chance to get right back to number one yeah. with one fight. He doesn't have to rebuild. He doesn't have to worry about Usyk a third time or anything like that, which wasn't going to happen anyway. So he can fight the guy that's acknowledged as number one in the division. He can win a belt that he's never won before with the WBC and also win the ring championship and be the lineal champion. In other words, he can shake off a loss to, to Usyk and jump right back in against the number one guy. And if you beat him, now you're number one. Um, I am a little surprised how quickly it's happened because big mega fights, they don't happen that quickly like that. Now, but if it does happen, it just goes to show you that all the posturing and all the bullshit from everybody about these fights that aren't happening shows you that if the sides want to make a fight, promoter differences, network differences, they can be overcome and you can make matches. Um, there was never a reason why it should have taken five years to make Mayweather Pacquiao. If there's political will on both sides... Frank Warren and Anthony Joshua and Eddie Hearn and Frank Warren, all of them seem to want to make the match. Yeah. The management seems to be on board. Uh, fans, I think, are, are positive about the fight. Yeah, so, yeah, you can it. make the match. But it, this will be a lesson to every other big fight out there yeah. where they give you a lot of nonsense about why it's not happening to say, I don't want to hear that. These guys just made this fight in five minutes, basically. Yeah. But, again, let me see the, let me see let me see the press release. Let me see the... The press conference. Let me see a, a tweet from Eddie or from uh, five, or, the, or or from five two eight or from uh, you know Frank Warren or the two fighters, whoever. Tell me that it's official, and I'll believe it. Because don't play with my heart. No, no. I mean that that fight for me is uh, well. It's, it's going to time will stand still when that happens. I have to like look in the flights to Cardiff, I guess. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you should book now because apparently hotels are getting booked up. Talk to me about the fight in general. You've seen fights from however many decades and you know you go back a long way what happens in this fight in your humble opinion between Joshua and Fury yeah uh, you know what I don't even want to say what happens because I'm not going to I'm not going down the rabbit hole if it's happening until it's happened so when the fights happen you can we can zoom it up and we'll yes. talk about it in in depth but right now I'm not saying I, when they make the fight we'll talk about it okay up um Chris Eubank Jr. Conor Ben um, Chris Eubank Sr. has come out and he's mentioned about this and it's not safe etc but it seems a it's a bit too late. The contracts are signed. If there was an issue, the issue would have been resolved. Junior's playing the the the, 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 the villain quite well. He's eating on Instagram Live, you know, showing that he's eating. He's not too concerned about his weight. This fight surely is not going to get stalled by um, by these comments. Oh, I don't. I don't think it's getting stalled. I mean, you know, I can I can appreciate where his father's coming from. He doesn't want to see his son, you know, put himself in a position that puts him at a at a great disadvantage or to get hurt or anything like that. But again, the time for those those conversations were in private with your son before the contract was signed. Yeah. So, you know, as I have said and others have said, Chris Eubank Jr. signed the contract, not Chris Eubank Sr. Yeah. So his father can certainly offer, offer him his, his advice and his counsel and his viewpoints. But Chris Eubank Jr. is his own man, I think, and can make his own decision. What chance do you give Conor Ben in this fight? Um, 
it's a big ask. He's stepping up in weight, but Chris obviously does have that clause, has to come down. Um, Connor's trajectory at the minute is skyrocketing, whereas Chris, every time he has, I suppose, stepped up to world level, it's not worked out, but he is a big name. He does have a huge size advantage going into this. It's evident when they look at each other, but Connor Ben, what are his chances in this fight? I mean, I find it to be a fascinating fight because all the things you just said, I mean, and plus Connor is shown, at least in the welterweight division, to be very explosive as a puncher. Yeah. But Eubank is obviously a bigger fighter. Uh, we've never seen Eubank. He's lost fights and, you know, even was, uh, but never been knocked out for a 10 count or anything yeah, like that. Uh, yeah. You know, so that's why we're interested because we can sit here and sort of see different scenarios how that fight yeah. unfolds. And we're not really sure where there's other fights that we feel like we have an idea. And so yeah. you're maybe not... I just don't know on this one. I mean, uh, you know, I might slightly favor Ben just because of the youth and the and the the attitude. He's never been beaten, yeah. has that explosive power, and Eubank has, knows what it's like to lose and, and all the mental aspects of it. But from a physical standpoint, weight classes were created for a reason. Yeah. So if he makes the weight comfortably, relatively speaking, yeah. you know, then it's going to be a very tough fight for Conor Penn. I think, that, I think that's a big key is... When we see him at the wing, does he look like a potato chip or does he look like he's healthy? Yeah, does he look thick? That's what I was saying. Yeah, say. exactly. So you, I don't think we're going to have a really true idea until we see maybe an open workout where they yeah, yeah. where they get in front of the cameras and, and, and show their stuff a little bit. But I don't know. I'm just – I know this. I'll be sitting uh, – uh, not ringside. I won't be at the fight, but I'll certainly be uh, watching with interest uh, when that fight occurs. Absolutely. Uh, last one from me. Jake Paul, Anderson Silva. Let's go down this route. Um – People are wanting Jake Paul to fight someone legit and keep talking about professional boxers. He's not really a professional boxer, but he's an MMA legend. He's got hands. What's your take on this? Think it's a good fight? I think it's a very... I love the fight. I mean, if, I mean, I love the fight in the context of a Jake Paul fight. Because yeah. to me, I've always said there's room for everybody under this great big tent of boxing. Yeah. And uh, I respect Jake Paul for what he's been doing. Yes, we want to see him fight a real boxer. He tried against Tommy Fury. It wasn't his fault. It didn't happen twice. He tried against Hasim Rockman Jr. It wasn't his fault that that didn't happen. So he's been giving the effort. And you can say what you want about Anderson Silva. He's not a quote-unquote real boxer. But here's the bottom line. He's one of the great combat sports fighters in the history of combat sports, number one. And number two, he has been a dedicated boxer for the last few years. He has boxing experience. Connor, I mean, uh, Anderson is 3-1 and one as a professional. Uh, Jake is 5-0 and oh as a professional. So in terms of the number of bouts they've had, they're on par with each other yeah. and I think it's a I looked at that match and I heard that that was serious I was like man maybe Jake bit off a little bit too much than he can yeah. chew on this one but you got to respect the hustle he's he's going after it I can't I can't argue with that yeah I'm slowly warming to him slowly but not I'm not fully there yet, but he's um he's winning me over a little by little and it's hard not to because he doesn't seem a bad guy but you know what I mean? Um, look, Dan Raphael, thanks for talking to Into Boxing. Always a pleasure catching up. Hopefully we can catch up, get a reaction after the fight. And, yeah, um, always a pleasure. Thank you very much. It's always my pleasure, too.